Alrighty, in this lesson we are going to add this little icon up here in the top left, or sorry, the top right. Uh, one thing to note about this is this icon is actually part of a larger header that takes up approximately this entire area, so the area typical header would. Um, just adds up as you're actually trying to structure this and design this if you're doing it ahead of time. Um, just this icon isn't a lone soldier, it is part of a larger header that takes up this entire area. At least the way I structured it, you can do it whatever way works for you. So diving into our application here, first thing we're going to do, uh, because as I mentioned, I'm setting this up as an entire header, application can have multiple headers, we'll create a new directory and I'm just going to call that header, that way we can add different components in there as we need them. I've got my index.js, styles.js, and then I will also just call this header We've just got one, so that is fine for us. In here, we will set up our export, so we're going to import header from header. We'll also import styles from styles, and then we will export header and styles. Go ahead to the styles.js and set up our uh, boilerplate for extended style sheet. So import eStyle sheet, create it, and then export that as default. So now we can actually go ahead and start setting up our header component and if we look at the image uh, you can see that we've got one big container that will actually wrap the entire header and then inside of there this icon, this gear icon is going to be tappable. So we need a touchable, we're going to use touchable opacity in this case and then finally we need the image component to render this icon for us. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say first off of course import react and then we're going to import the view touchable opacity and finally the image. Something else we're going to have to do before I forget uh, actually I'm going to reveal this in the finder and I'm going to put the images in for this header which is just that uh, that gear icon and you can get those images down below. Uh, so with that set up we can actually go and start writing our component so I'm going to const header is equal to a stateless component uh, we'll return that and then we'll say export default header. We're going to have our view which is going to wrap the entire thing and that'll actually be our navbar and then inside of there we'll have a touchable opacity and inside of that touchable opacity is where the actual image will be so we'll set the source of that to be require images slash what did I name it? Gear. Images slash gear.png and then go ahead and close that component. So let's go ahead and actually call this and render it, see what happens. Uh, go to the home.js and we know this is going to be at the very top of our component. Actually we need to make sure we import it first. So import header from components header and as I said before, we know this is going to be at the top, so we want to make sure we actually uh, put it as close to the top as possible. The status bar doesn't actually render anything, so we'll just put it below that. All right, and we see that the icon is actually showing up down here at the bottom. Uh, not at the bottom, but at the top, pushed up right on all the elements. And that's because of that align item center and justify content center that we've got on the container but we still do want this to be part of this container. Uh, and to kind of break out of that, what we're going to do is actually use the position absolute, which if you're a web developer, you've probably used that before. So for our header component, we'll go ahead and just set a style is equal to styles dot. I will just call this container. And then inside of there, actually make sure we import styles so we don't have this error showing up. Import styles from styles and then inside of here we can go ahead and set our container. So for our container we want to actually say position absolute. We also want this to say this goes all the way to the left and then we want it to go all the way to the right as well and then finally we want it to stick to the very very top. So if we save this we can see that the icon is pushed up right on the edge of the screen in the top left. Now let's actually go ahead and style this icon so it floats over to the right. Um, and to do that, we'll actually set up two different styles. First is going to be the button, which is attached to the touchable highlight, and then we'll have the icon. 
the icon style simple, so we'll just set it right now, and that's going to be 18. Uh, so if we go to the header.js and actually assign these styles, we can say styles.button, and then for the image, it's going to be style is equal to styles.icon. So again, we're, if hopefully that's clear enough, but you can see that this image is kind of clipping. Um, so once again, we're going to use that resize mode is equal to contain. Save it, okay. So the icon's pushed all the way to the left now, not exactly what we want. We want it pushed all the way to the right, and we can do that on the styles.button property. And before we do that, I wanna actually show you something that's cool about React Native Extended Style Sheet. If I go uh, to where I say estylesheet.build, if I actually say outline is one, you can see it'll actually go ahead and outline all of the components. And obviously this can be a little distracting, but if we look up here, we can see that we're, we've got this uh, container based off of this green background, and we've got this red box, which is actually the uh, component, the actual touchable component that we want to set up. So if we go to our styles.js and we go in here, first thing we want to actually align self, so we're saying align this item all the way to the end of the flex box it's in. So if we resave this, you can see that the screen box was the flex box and I wanted to align it all the way to the end. We also want to make the actual touchable area a bit bigger. So to do that, we'll say padding vertical is going to be five and then padding horizontal is going to be 20. So that'll give it some more room on the top, more room on the left and the right, just so we can tap in different spots and don't have to be super, super precise. So we're definitely getting closer. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this outline one just because it can be a bit distracting. But if you ever wanna kind of figure out how your components are laid out, that's an awesome way to do it. Um, as you can see here, this gear icon is pushed right up on the status bar. And we wanna not have it pushed right up on the status bar. So we're going to go ahead to the actual container component or the container style and remedy that. And we'll actually use some media queries to do that. So we can pass a string in and we'll say at media, iOS, so if the device is iOS, we can say padding top is going to be equal to 20. Uh, the status bar on all devices is going to be like 20 pixels high, so this works well on iOS. Save that, and you can see that the button is pushed off of the top, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now on Android, it's not quite as simple. Let me actually go ahead and pull an Android simulator up so we can see this but you can see that this icon is still bumped up here. And we don't necessarily know what the status bar size is going to be on a Android device. So we need to do something a little bit different for that. And to do that, we can actually take advantage of the status bar. So I'll say, get my import working, and we're going to import the status bar from React Native. And again, we'll use a media query. This time we're going to say at media. Android is going to be, uh, we'll again set the padding top. This time, however, we're going to say status bar dot current height. And this is a property that's only available on Android. So if you try to work, use that on iOS, it's not going to work. But as this reloads, you can see that now we've got that uh, little bit of padding away from the status bar on an Android device. Final thing we need to do is actually attach this uh, on press, so when the gear icon is actually pressed to something. So if we go to the header.js, uh, first thing we want to do is actually pass this on press in. And just like at other places we've done, we'll, we can then pass that on press function down to the actual touchable component. And just to alleviate this error, we'll want to import prop types. And then we can go ahead and define that. So header prop types is going to be uh, on press and the prop type is going to be func for function. Save that. Um, now we can actually go ahead and hook that up. So going to my screens home.js, we'll create a new function called handle options press. We can again just say console.log handle options press and then we will actually pass that to our header component. So we can say uh, on press is going to equal this dot handle options press. And because I can't make a video without a typo, 
uh, we'll go ahead and change that colon to a semicolon, save it, and hopefully this actually works for us this time. Reload it, and we're all set up. So now when we press this icon, handle options press will be logged to the console.